Over the last few weeks, the world has entirely changed. And your world has too, and our world as church. So for a little while, this is how we're going to be doing church. And I hope that you'll gather with your family, perhaps even with the children, and do church this way for a time. But as we all watch the video together, so will we be connected. We'll still be the body of Christ. His spirit will be with us. Don't just watch this time together. Enter into it fully with your hearts. I hope that you might have the sheet printed in front of you. I hope that you might enjoy the music that I've uh, prepared for you. And I hope that you'll be nourished and nurtured by these minutes together. Here's sovereign grace with all creatures of our God and King. We just heard sung, all the redeemed, washed by his blood, come and rejoice in his great love. And despite all the turmoil and trouble that we're living in, I hope today you'll be able to rejoice in his great love. From Psalm 103, we read, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together, even in these difficult and unusual circumstances. May in these minutes we draw closer to you and be nurtured and refreshed in our walk with you and sustained for these trying times. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Bible tells us to approach God confidently through our Lord Jesus Christ. As we do so, we must confess our sin, seeking God's forgiveness through his boundless goodness and mercy. So let us draw near to God with sincerity and confidence and pray together. God of all mercy, we humbly admit that we need your help. We have wandered from your way. We have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what is right. You alone can save us. Have mercy on us, wipe out our sins and teach us to forgive others. Bring forth in us the fruit of the Spirit, that we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus our Saviour. Amen. The Bible assures us that when we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all that is wrong. So I say to you, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. As we open God's word this morning, let me pray before Susan Calder comes and reads for us. Heavenly Father, give us wisdom and understanding. As we listen to your word, may we know you better, love you more, and learn to praise you in all we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible reading is from John chapter 11, verse 1 to 45. I hope you can have your Bible handy to follow along. That's John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when they heard Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days, and then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews there were trying to stone you, and yet you're going back. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, 
for they will see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the, the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting, comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But th some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Jesus said, did I not tell you if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. I recorded this sermon last week when things were still pretty uncertain. So my opening comments reflect that uncertainty.
Well, friends, as I'm recording this, I'm wondering how everyone is faring across the diocese in regard to the coronavirus. Uh, you'll be aware that we've made um, necessary precautions uh, to keep everybody safe. Uh, in this particular emergency. And it may well be that you're watching this because by the time um, this comes uh, to be watched, uh, then the government may have requested that we don't gather together as church. Um, so that's all completely up in the air as I record this this morning. Um, but nonetheless, if that be the case, uh, we'll continue to make resources available to you online uh, to make sure that we're continually um, nurtured in our trust in the Lord Jesus, especially as we approach Easter. Now, it may be that this coronavirus emergency leads people to consider their mortality, to consider their vulnerability. And that may not be a bad thing. And it's one reason why today's passage and today's message is actually very timely. For Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Now, either Jesus was a fraud, or what he said that day is the most amazing and wonderful news ever. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die living though dying and never actually dying what is jesus talking about and how is this even possible in the western world all kinds of people are trying to live longer and in fact of course we understand that and it's one of the reasons why they're working hard to find the vaccine that will help prevent people becoming sick in the light of COVID 19. We want to protect the elderly and those who are most vulnerable. Um, but apart from the current emergency, there's a whole economy entirely dependent on people's desire to live longer. Uh, healthcare products of all descriptions, gyms, personal trainers, light and easy type meals, uh, anti-aging creams, millions of dollars appropriately poured into research about cancer, uh, marvellous advances in medicines, which means that people are already living longer than they were 40 to 50 years ago. Why do people want to live longer? Why do people want to prolong life for as long as they possibly can? Often, not all the time, but often, it's because they have no hope of anything beyond death and therefore no hope. This life is all they have. So if people think that when you're dead, you're dead, then yes, we must hang on to life at all cost. Let me re remind you of a little bit of the context of these words of Jesus in John 11. A, a dear friend of Jesus had died. His name was Lazarus. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha, and it seems that Jesus was close to this family, often having meals with them. Now, Jesus did a very unexpected thing when he heard that Lazarus was in really bad shape and close to death. He did not go and heal him as he was well able to do. In fact, he resolved not to go and told his disciples about that. He only turned up four days after Lazarus' death. Martha says to the Lord when he does turn up, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. She's sad, she's confused. She's wondering why Jesus didn't come earlier, knowing that he could have done something. And Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. That's an extraordinary claim. Who does Jesus think he is? Promising that if people trust him, then they'll live even though they die. It's, it, it's a claim that if you or I trust Jesus, that even though we die a physical death and, and our body will end up in a, in a casket and a hearse, then actually will live on, will 
never really die. And that after the physical death, we'll find ourselves still alive in the presence of Jesus, eventually with new bodies, the Bible says elsewhere, ready to live forever, for eternity, without limit and without ever dying. That's an absolutely bizarre promise to make. Who does Jesus think he is? Is he deluded? Is he a fraud? Is he mad? Or is he profoundly speaking the truth? How are we meant to work it out? We need a sign, Jesus. We need something to go on. We need something to help us draw our conclusions. And that is exactly what he went on to do. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he went on to prove it by raising Lazarus from the dead. He came to Lazarus, to where Lazarus had been laid. Uh, It was a cave with a stone across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. Martha was concerned, concerned about the smell more than anything else, seeing that he'd been there four days already. Jesus prayed, and with a loud voice he cried out, Lazarus, come out. Can you imagine the tension in the air at that point? If nothing happened, Jesus would would look completely foolish, powerless, an embarrassment. Who knows how long it took Lazarus to hop off the shelf inside and shuffle out with his grave clothes on. Can you imagine? What an amazing moment that must have been. People thinking, is he coming? Did I hear something? Look, there's some movement there. He's coming out. Yes, yes, Lazarus did eventually emerge and Jesus said take off the grave clothes and let him go he says he is the resurrection and the life he's the origin of both he's the force behind both he's the power of both and he proves it by raising Lazarus from the dead it has been said that it's just as well Jesus used Lazarus' name that day. Otherwise, all the dead would have come out. Can you imagine the tension in the air? Can you imagine the surprise of the people? Can you imagine the delight of the people? Let me ask you, what what, what do you make of Jesus? If he is who he says he is, the resurrection and the life, then I want to put it to you that there is hope in this world's darkness, especially hope in our current context. If he's the resurrection and the life, then this life and all that we see is not all there is. If he's the resurrection and the life, then there are some answers to life's fundamental questions about purpose and meaning, about justice and evil and suffering. If he's the resurrection and the life, then for each and every person here, there is the offer, the promise of life beyond death. I'm sure many of you watching this already know this and have embraced it and are reveling in that and are anticipating already that new life in eternity. But how can you be sure that will be yours? Well, the text says, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say the the religious will live, the good will live, those who try their hardest will live. And it doesn't say those who don't do anything major wrong will live. It doesn't say those who keep all the commandments will live. It doesn't say those who get to church regularly will live. No, Jesus says those who believe in me will live. Whoever lives by believing in me are the ones who will never die. That word uh, believing is all about relationship because Jesus is on about relationship. 
To believe in Jesus is to be in a relationship with him. It's to trust him. It's to trust who he is. It's to trust he's for real. It's to trust that his death on the cross deals with your rebellion, reconciles you to God. It means you entrust your life to him. To trust that your life is better off lived for him than without him. Is that how you live? Is he number one in your life? Or number 21? Is he a component of your life? Or is he your life? You've been created for relationship with him and until you discover and embrace all the joys of that relationship, you're not yet all you've been created to be. In fact, you're very seriously missing out. If you've entrusted your life to Jesus, if he is your first love, then you will walk out of here today knowing that although you will face a physical death, you will never actually die. And and you will know that if you get struck by COVID-19 so seriously that it takes your life, you won't actually die, but you'll live. And that life, the life that you live now, with Jesus is the best possible life you could live because it's being lived in relationship with God as God created it to be in the first place. I am the resurrection and the life, said Jesus. And he raised Lazarus to show that he was no fraud and no fool, but that he was who he said he was. And very soon on Easter Day, God willing, we're able to meet. But nevertheless, meeting together or not, on Easter Day, we will recall with joy that he himself broke the shackles of death and broke free from the tomb. And that he says all the more clearly down through the centuries to us, I am alive. And because I'm alive, whoever lives by believing in me will never die. That day when Martha's heart was broken because her brother had died and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you know what else Jesus added? Four more words he added to that famous phrase. Do you believe this? He challenged Martha. And I'm going to finish with four more words not addressed to Martha today, but addressed to you. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Do you believe this? Let's come together now in a time of prayer. Let's join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be exalted, Lord, above the heavens. Let your glory cover the earth. Keep our nation under your care and guide us in justice and truth. Let your way be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Send out your light and your truth that we may tell of your saving works. Have mercy on the poor and oppressed. Hear the cry of those in need. Hear our prayers, O Lord, for we put our trust in you. Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us by your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but lead and govern us in all things, that we may always do what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In our prayers today, let's first of all bring before the Lord 
the whole situation regarding COVID-19. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we come before you now and commit to you the global spread of the coronavirus. We ask you to act mercifully in this situation. Please halt the spread of the virus. Protect those who are especially vulnerable. Heal those who are sick. Prevent any further death. Give wisdom to those who lead and govern, that they may take every necessary step for the good of those who serve. Calm the hearts of those who are anxious, and please grant your comfort to those who are isolated or who have already lost loved ones from the virus. Exercise your sovereign power in your great love and bring an end to this sickness, we pray. And we pray for your people at this time. Please strengthen us to be salt and light in the world. May our lives be characterized by peace and not panic, by faith rather than fear, by self-sacrifice and service rather than self-seeking, by the proclamation of the gospel to a world that desperately needs the good news of Christ. May our lives be a witness to the firm foundation of Jesus and his life-giving words. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Father, we pray for us as a church at this time. Even though we cannot meet together in one place, we thank you for the technology that allows us to meet together in this way. Help us to look out for and to care for one another. Be with our clergy at this difficult time. Help them to be wise in knowing how to best bring your, to bring your word to us at this time. May we look back and see how you've used this time in remarkable ways. Help us to share your love with others. In Jesus' name, Amen. And we particularly pray for those who we know and love who are doing it tough at this time. Maybe you've known people who know people who have already lost their jobs. So let us pray for people doing it tough. Our Father, we pray for family and friends and people we know and love who are doing it tough because of this difficult circumstance. We especially pray for those who have lost their jobs, that you would provide for them in extraordinary ways and give them peace that passes understanding. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are feeling already lonely and isolated and confused, that you would be their rock, their refuge and their strength. And we pray for those who we know and love, who are anxious, depressed, or they were already unwell before all of this happened. Where it is your desire, please mend and restore them and comfort those who are struggling in any way. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, these are tough times. Please continue to look out for and care for one another. Care for your clergy too, because they will be doing it tough. So see how you might be an encouragement and a blessing to them. Make sure that they're doing okay as well. Here's Sovereign Grace again with O oh Lord my Rock and my Redeemer. Christ our Saviour, draw you to himself, that you might find in him crucified a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.